Um, I'm my name is Xinzi. I'm now a PhD, PhD candidate in the Department of Industrial and Systems Engineering at the University of Florida. And this is a joint work with Dr. Ha, Dr. Haladish, and Dr. Shen in multiple departments at the University of Florida. And today I'm going to share our work about data-driven adaptive testing resource allocation strategies for real-time monitoring of infectious diseases. Um, as everybody is known that infectious diseases, including the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, have continued to be a major global public health threat due to the increasing cost of healthcare and the cost of the deaths. And it is so it is very critical for us to detect the disease outbreaks as early as possible to support timely implementation of public health interventions and to contain the rapid spread of infectious diseases at the early stage. And we know that mass testing is key to tracking the spread of pandemic based on the diagnostic tests. Um, but the challenge is that the testing availability is limited, especially at the early stage of a novel uh, infectious disease, um, and it will lead to insufficient testing data. And the insufficient testing data will impede our analysis of the spread of infectious diseases and also impede the effective monitoring of the uh, infectious diseases. So this were uh, so uh, in the Sorry. So, uh, in, in the current literature, there are so many works about the modeling and monitoring methods in epidemiology to monitor the infectious diseases. But uh, unfortunately, they are not handling the inadequate data, data. So the models are unreliable. And to deal with a limited testing av av availability, uh, there are a lot of pool testing strategies to handle it, to increase the overall testing efficiency. But it will in, um, but it will incur increased um, reporting delays and lower testing sensitivity, and it will impede our real time monitoring. So in this work, we are focused on individual diagnostic tests, and there are also many works about the resource allocation strategies to help us uh, implement uh, um, the test allocation, like many uh, MAB uh, multi armed bandit MAB techniques. Um, but all these methods are applicational uh, agnostic. How to deal, how to integrate these techniques into our problem is still challenging. So in this uh, work, uh, our goal is to integrate some physical information with the insufficient testing data to help us to properly characterize the spatial and temporal transmission patterns of infectious diseases. And based on that, we will develop our data-driven test allocation strategies for quick disease outbreak detection. And here is an overview of, of our um, proposed methodology. Um, our first step is to collect the testing data based on the diagnostic tests allocated. And in this work, we are, uh, based on, uh, we are focusing on updates the, uh, the, uh, the test allocation based on the geographic unit of census block groups. And within, within each um, block groups, we assume the random sampling. Uh, and after we collect all the testing data from all the block groups, we will combine this uh, testing data, though limited, with the physical information to assess the appropriate uh, health risk. And we will combine physical information uh, associated with the transmission dynamics and the health disparity of infectious diseases. The transmission pattern, uh, the, the transmission dynamics will help us to identify the positive cases and the health disparity will help us to pay more attention to the vul vulnerable uh, population groups. And after we assess the health risks, we will update our test allocation. And along the time, we will also, uh, it will also help us to detect the possible disease outbreaks. And along the time, we will uh, do these steps iteratively. And first of all, I would like to introduce our physics informed model. Uh, we model the infection risks using the Bayesian framework. And to account for the future change, we will also model our, the pro prospective infection risks uh, using a symmetric transmission matrix. Here, the transmission matrix is 
decomposed into two patterns. One is about the local transmission patterns and another one is imported transmission patterns. And the first one, transmission, a local transmission pattern will characterize the transmission within each group. Uh, and it will characterize by the local computation risk uh, scores. Uh, and for the uh, imported transmission patterns, it will characterize the transmission uh, among all the groups. Uh, so it will be characterized by the connected scores. And all these scores will be evaluated by some associated factors uh, that will uh, lead to the spread of the infectious diseases. And for the possible factors, I will introduce them in, in a few slides. And apart from the infection risks, we also account for the severity risk measures um, that will, uh, which is intuitive that uh, the population groups that will be, uh, that will at the higher risk of getting severely infected will definitely be uh, drawn more attention. And similarly, it will be characterized by a disease severity risk score. Uh, and for this part, it will, it can account for the health disparity measure. And by combining these two uh, risks, the infection risk and the severity risk, we will assess the risk levels for each group. And by uh, using this, we will, uh, we will update our test allocation. The basic idea is to um, balance between the exploitation and exploration. That is, we will allocate more tests to the block groups that at the higher, highest risk levels. And also we will al allocate more tests to the uh, block groups that length the test. So their uh, risk levels will be of the high, high uncertainty. So balancing these two, we will uh, intelligently uh, update our te uh, limited test. Um, apart from these informative uh, states, we will also update the allocation proportional to the population, um, which is intuitive because the the groups that that has a larger population will definitely be allocated more tests, even they have the same risks. Uh, after that, uh, we will simultaneously monitor the the infection rates uh, over all the groups. And um, the basic steps is where we first estimate the risks and then diagnose the most suspected BG, uh, the block groups that at the highest risk and then update our monitoring statistic and then guide our detection decision. Uh, we have done some uh, simulation uh, motivated by the COVID-19 pandemic in North Central Florida, uh, which come, which uh, including uh, nearly 600 block groups. And here is how we evaluate the scores the three types of scores uh, in our physics informed model, uh, which is um, pre-evaluated based on the medical geographic analysis. We use the population density and the communication, uh, community uh, infection risks uh, to characterize the local contagion risk, measuring the neighborhood contagion risk within each group. And we use the point distance and the state at our home rate, which is a proxy uh, the proxy factor for mo mobility score, which will measure how frequently the two, uh, two groups interact. And also we use the ADI, the aerial deprivation index, which uh, indicates a societal economic deprivation in a geographic area to measure the sever severity risk. And all this data, all these factors are, are, are publicly uh, ready and available. Uh, we, uh, in the simulation, we generate three different transmission cases regarding different social distancing adherence. Uh, uh, like uh, there when the case when there is very limited adherence and in the case when the positive rate will go into, uh, will reach a steady state. And in the case that there will be a second wave and we will evaluate our method uh, regarding different perspective of the performance. Regarding the uh, uh, model uh, estimation, uh, the calibration of our physics informed model, we can say that uh, the uh, regarding the accuracy and the convergence, the estimation is pretty good. And for our allocation, we compare it for uh, with some competing algorithm, and we find out that uh, compared to other algorithms, our method uh, can achieve robust and 
overall robust and the uh, satisfactory performance regarding the number of the positive cases. And for the monitoring part, uh, the performance is generally consistent with our allocation performance, which is intuitive because a uh, better allocation performance will uh, lead us to collect higher quality testing data. And based on higher quality testing data, we can uh, project the transmission patterns better, and then we can detect the, the outbreaks uh, in an effective way. So our proposed method can achieve the shortest detection delay in, de uh, in detecting the disease outbreaks. So in summary, uh, we develop a, a data-driven test allocation strategies and by leveraging the physical information into model with the limited testing data to properly pro pro project and describe the spatial and transmission patterns. Uh, so based on this, we can use, the, the, use this for quickly detecting the disease outbreaks. And we also investigate our method from the methodology from a theoretical and empirical way uh, to guarantee the capability of the allocation and the monitoring. Uh, that, so that is end of my presentation and I'm open to your questions and comments. Thank you for your attention.